brilliant. So we're going to get a flavour today, um, children, of, of what we're doing um, with uh, the sun. And this, this classroom is what you're also going to use in, um, in VIC's Rocks from Space um, uh, education programme, where you're all being assigned the planet and you're also doing a little bit about the sun and part of that uh, rocks and space program we're going to be doing about the sun as well so even though you're going to have to, to, to leave at uh, 10 to 1 today we'll get a lot of this other material in um, during the rocks and space program so as you've got to go quite quickly um, I'm just going to move us on to the next page and just introduce you to who everybody is here at the top you can hopefully now see here's Vic Pearson who runs um, the rocks and space program that you're going to be involved in Lucy who's also with today is down the bottom here. Lucy is from University College London and she works at the Millard Space Science Laboratory um, which is down in, in Surrey in a, in a town called Dorking. Um, Vic of course is from the Open University and she works at Milton Keynes. Uh, there's myself here at the top right hand side and I'm from the local planetarium and the observatory and some of you may know Val Brooks who, who is the assistant director at Stuff and CLC. Unfortunately she's not ready to join us straight away, she may, may join halfway through the session. Um, so to kick off, we've got a lot of screens here with lots of information on, um, but we may reuse these uh, when you join us in some of the classrooms later. And I think it would be quite important if some of you have got some questions that you might actually like to ask about the sun and planets in general. And uh, Lucy uh, will hopefully be able to answer any of the detailed questions that you have about the sun. Would you like to, uh, to raise your hand if, you, if you'd like to uh, ask a question then? Excellent. So I presume we're just all going to come to the microphone one at a time, Mr. Stoddart. Um, um, so if you'd like to bring the first of the, of the children to the microphone and if they'd like to introduce themselves. Also in this uh, little chat box you can see down here, I'm just going to type hello in there. You can all uh, send messages at the same time as we're answering questions. So you can have a couple of people on the computer if you'd like. Um, one of you could be typing a question that we can answer. Um, Lucy's probably a lot better at multitasking that than I am. So on this saying hello, so Vic will, uh, will obviously be able to answer your questions as well, and if one of you asks a question at the microphone, if you'd like to come along and introduce yourself, say hello to us, and then ask your question. Hey, hi, I'm Hi, hi. hi I'm Ethan, um, how hot is the sun? Lucy, would you like to take that? Yeah, excellent, that's a very, very good question. The sun is extremely hot, which is why it shines so brightly in the sky. And the surface of the sun, which is the part you can see in the daytime, looks very yellow. Um, but of course, we should never look at the sun directly because it's, it's very bad for your eyes. But the surface of the sun is a huge 6,000 degrees, which is about 300 times hotter than your oven. It's very, very hot. Uh, hi, I'm Colin. So, why can't we see the sun so at the moment? Okay, with that, why can't we see any sunspots at the moment? Well, that's another good question. Um, the sun goes through lots of changes. And sometimes there are um, times where the sun has lots and lots of sunspots on it. And then at other times, the sun has really no sunspots at all. And we call that the solar cycle. So if we think about the solar cycle, at the moment, there aren't any sunspots. And we call it solar minimum. So it just means no sunspots on the sun. But over the next few years, the sunspots will come back again. And then we'll have lots and lots and lots of sunspots on the sun. And at that time, we'll call it solar maximum. Um, but it's going to take us about four and a half or five years to get up to solar maximum. So you can see that the sun takes a long time to make these changes. So no sunspots at the moment, but that's just because we're at solar minimum. But they will come back again. Thanks. That's excellent. 
Well, thanks, Lucy. I don't know whether you can see that, Colin. There's a picture of the sun cycle that Lucy was talking about from 1996 all the way around to 2006. And you can see in 1996 and 2006, there weren't many sunspots, but there are some. And then in 2001, that was solar maximum. And solar maximum will occur again in 2012, and we're actually on our way there now. So although you can't see any sunspots at the moment, over the next few weeks, you will be able to see one or two. So keep your eyes open. The sun's always full of surprises. We might suddenly get one or two really quite big ones. Hi, I'm Megan. Why is the sun so big? Sorry, was that Nadine? Could you say that again? You broke up there, Nadine. I think you said, why is the sun so big? Great, Lucy, would you like to take that one? Oh, another good question. Well, you're right, the sun is extremely large, but all stars are big, actually. Any, so any star that you see in the night time, when you look out and you see the, the shining spots of light, they're all very, very big objects. Stars are big. And the reason for them being big is just because we think they formed from lots and lots of material. So they're big because there's lots of material out there, and the material all came together to form our sun. And in fact, suns need to be very big, um, because otherwise they wouldn't be able to shine. So stars, the special things about stars is that they shine and they make their own light, so not like the planets. And objects need to be very, very big to shine like a star. That's super, thank you. I hope you understood that, Nadine. Can you see the picture we've got up at the moment? On the right-hand side where my mouse is at the moment, there's the sun. And the sun is quite a small star, as Lucy explained. There's lots of stars that are bigger than that. If we move along there, we get to a star that's the brightest one in the nighttime sky called Sirius, but it's not the biggest. And then Sirius, on the next line, moves around down to this tiny little dot down here, which is Sirius again. Then we go through other stars called Pollux, Arcturus, Aldebaran. And then Aldebaran shrinks down to the tiny little dot down here. And we go through to big stars like this one called Al uh, Betelgeuse. And Arch Antares, this one. Then Antares goes down to this one. And we grow and grow and grow to the biggest star in the sky here called VV Cephei, which is 2,000 times as big as our sun. So all our sun's enormous. It's big. It's about one point three million kilometers from one side to the other. Imagine how big the VC flower would be. That's a huge star in the sky. Do we have any more questions? <laughs> Hi, my name is Shannon. Why is the Earth smaller than the Sun? That's an excellent question, Shannon. Rick, would you like to have a look at that one? Um, the sun has to be so large, um, but the sun and all of the planets formed um, from a big ball of gas and dust, and um, the sun is at the centre of that big disk, and the planets formed from all of the bits of dust that were left over, and um, that's how the Earth and all of the other planets are much smaller. Now you'll see that the four rocky planets, that's Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, are a lot smaller than the bigger planets that are made of gas, that's Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. As Frank said, um, and you'll see that the, the smaller planets are made of dust because there was a lot, lot less dust around in the uh, in the disk, and a lot of it formed these planets. And the gases that were left over in, from the big disk at the time went on to form um, the gas giants. Now you'll also find that there are bits of the bits and bits of dust and rock that were left over that didn't get made into planets actually formed the asteroids and the comets, which are at the outer edges of the solar system. And also, oh good, this has got the dwarf planets on as well, which of course Pluto is now one of. So um, really that's why the, uh, the, all of the planets are much smaller than the sun, because they were formed from, um, oh hi Val, sorry, got put off there. They were formed from um, the dust that was left over when our sun and the solar system formed. <laughs> 